You're insane. What do you mean you haven't started with your assignment yet? It's due in a few hours. Wait. So you're telling me you haven't submitted your project and you thought today is the perfect day to go out on a date? Madam President, Toastmaster of the evening, fellow Toastmasters and honorable guests. I have a confession to make. I'm a procrastinator. I'm a procrastinator and I say it with my head held high. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to brag or anything, or maybe just a bit, but trust me that I can proudly say I execute tasks under loads of pressure without even flinching, while others succumb under stress. In fact, Dr. Joseph Ferrari, a professor of psychology at DePaul University, found as many as 20% of people are chronic procrastinators. You might think 20%, so that's nothing. What, like 1.56 billion people around the world are chronic procrastinators? Well, that's a higher number than people clinically diagnosed with phobias and depression. But before we dig deeper into the realm of procrastination, let's go back to the origin of the word. Apparently, the word entered the language in the 16th century, and it comes from the Latin origin procrastinus, which means putting off. Now, it's very important not to confuse laziness with procrastination. Laziness is being unwilling to act despite being completely able to exert oneself, whereas procrastination is the intentional delay in starting or finishing a task despite being fully aware of the negative consequences it might hold. And contrary to common belief, procrastination did not emerge with the rise of the internet. It's actually a tale as old as time. The first historically recorded act of procrastination goes back to 800 BC. Nowadays, Studies like to focus on two different types of procrastination, accidental and deliberate. Many people fall into the trap of procrastination, but while everybody can procrastinate, not everyone is a procrastinator. In fact, Salvador Dali and Aristotle are two perfect examples of deliberate procrastinators they used to delay their work in order to achieve better results. Whereas Leonardo da Vinci is the greatest example of accidental procrastination ever known. He regarded himself as a failure at one point and took 16 years to finish the Mona Lisa. Now, this makes me wonder, had he finished the Mona Lisa in a couple of months? Would it still be considered a masterpiece? A major misperception about procrastination is that it's a bad habit, or it stops someone from becoming successful. Victor Kim, an American entrepreneur, went to an absolute extreme by calling procrastination the opportunities assassin. Well, Victor is a drama queen. Don't be like Victor. Obviously, many studies like to focus on the downside of procrastination while completely disregarding all the benefits it has. Tonight, I will give you two reasons that will make you start procrastinating as of now. Number one, avoiding unnecessary effort. How many times have you submitted a piece of work only to be told it's not necessary anymore. Well, if you're gonna take on a task as soon as you receive it, this is about to happen. So work smart, not hard. Number two, saving time. Yes, I know this is very counterintuitive, but trust me, it's true. While procrastinating, you're limiting the time available to complete a task. If you hadn't procrastinated, 
you would have spent the entire day on one task that can be done in one hour. In fact, Adam Grant, an organizational psychologist at the University of Wharton, conducted with his colleagues a study on pizza chains. They discovered that the most successful stores are led by procrastinators. But how is that possible? What made procrastinators stand out from other executives is very simple. Productive procrastination. It helped them be more flexible and innovative and agile rather than sticking to the old fashioned and conservative linear path. So, fellow Toastmasters, if you are skilled in the art of procrastination, don't speed yourself up. Stop listening to people who would make you feel awful about procrastinating. Whoa, what a bad thing to do. Stop doing it. There's nothing wrong with doing things your way, especially when your results, compared to those who do not procrastinate, is of the same or even a higher level. As Dr. Ferrari says, Telling a chronic procrastinator to just do it is like telling a clinically depressed person to cheer up. So next time someone tells you to just do it, ask them to suck it up. Back to you, Mr.